Hello and welcome back to Heart Centered Money Conversations. My name is Laura Blahuda and this is Kristen Navy, financial coach. We are very excited for this episode all about budgeting. So if you are somebody who is looking to up-level your strategies around budgeting and start creating a greater um, ability to be able to budget and save and be able to shift around and weave your um, values that you have into what you're wanting to create with life so that you can really step into a new reality that's a little bit more exciting for yourself, then this is going to be an episode for you. So um, I'm curious, Kristen, very first question off the bat is why is budgeting so important? Oh, Laura, that's so good. I try to do my budget every single day. I am like so obsessed and like on top of it. And I find that it's so important because it allows us to set our goals as a priority. When we don't budget, often it's for a few reasons. One is we think that it's going to restrict us too much. And if you budget properly, that's not the case. You can set goals and live your life the way that you want to as well. Um, and it could be something that's really overwhelming and we just avoid it. And that's often what I find with people is that they're just avoiding doing their budget because they don't really want to know where their money is actually going. Mm -hmm. But it really empowers you to be able to find a place of, oh, OK, this is where I need to make adjustments so that way I can have this long term goal or this vacation or whatever your goal is, it doesn't even necessarily need to be retirement. You're like that's 30 years from now. I don't want to think about it. It could be like, okay, well, I'm saving up for a new computer. It could be anything. Right. So I think that's the reason that budgeting is really important. It's not about knowing where your money is going and like cutting things out. It's knowing where your money is going so you can prioritize the things that you truly want instead of we'll talk about it more in depth, but immediate gratification which is, I'm sure you know, and I think we talked about it on a previous episode too, that immediate gratification is so prevalent. And I think one of the biggest um, challenges that we need to deal with today, right? Yeah, so like it kind of comes like to a point where you're like, hey, like where I'm currently at is not fully fulfilling me. It's not giving me exactly what I want. So I need yeah. to like hone in a little bit more to the intentionality of what I'm doing so that you can then create that next kind of level of what you want. So I love that. Let's dive yeah. in. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think it's like, when you get to that point, that's when it can get really excited. Like I do my budget every day. Cause I'm like, I want to know like how much I'm available yeah. to save, right? Like what can I do to get my goals? It doesn't have to come from a, a space of um, like, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> scarcity. Scarcity. Yes. Thank you. I'm like, not abundance. The other one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right? It doesn't have to come from a place of scarcity. So today I'm going to talk um, all about, it's a little bit different today because I created this amazing guide that budgeting made simple. And I just want to walk everyone through this guide so that way you can understand the simplicity of budgeting and start to feel empowered around budgeting. So what I do, would encourage you to do is pause the video here Go download it. The link, the link is in the comments. So download the guide and then that way you can kind of follow through with us and then you can dive into it deeper on your own time or you can even pause this video multiple times as you go through it. Okay. So what I want to start with is goals, <laughs> setting goals. So forget about reality for a minute. <laughs> I want you to think about two different areas of goals. One is the savings portion and the other one is the debt portion. So what are the debts that you have that you want to get rid of? Because anybody who wants to live financially free won't have any debts, right? Or will have only good debts. Like maybe they have a mortgage, but it's building equity, good debts versus bad debts, right? So in terms of savings, don't think about, oh, where you are now. If you're like, oh, I don't really have a lot I don't want you to focus on that. I want to focus on the future, right? How much do you want to have saved? Or maybe you're looking to get to your financial independence number. If you don't know what a financial independence number is, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you with that. But it's how much money that you need to have saved by the time you retire so you don't have to work unless you choose to. And that's one of the things that we do is calculate that. Who so, do you want that? Right? <laughs> 
Sign me up. <laughs> Nobody wants to be working until they die anymore. We want to do it by choice. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. It's like retirement isn't an age. It's a number. It's like, how much money do I need to have in my bank account so I don't have to work? And, and if you are huge. working, you're doing things you love, right? Yeah. What you just said, I just want to like kind of reiterate where you said it's not an age, it's a number because yeah. you just hear so often, like I know it was programmed into me so much. It's like, okay, you work 35 years. And then you get to retire, but that's not the case because it's not that simple anymore where you can just work a job where you have a pension and you have benefits for 35 years and you have the money to be able to retire. It just simply does not work anymore. So I love that. Yeah. You know, that's huge. Yeah. I, and like our goals, I feel like our generation are so different than our parents. Like we'll do another episode all about pensions because I got a lot to say about pensions. <laughs> but I think you're absolutely right. Like We are like, how can we ta retire sooner? I want to enjoy my life. I want to be doing things that I love, right? So when you're setting out your goals, think of these things that you actually want for those goals. And, you know, you want them to be smart goals. So you want them to be realistic, but I say stretchingly realistic, right? You want it to have a time parameter. You want to make sure, okay, I want to hit this goal by this age or by, you know, next year or whatever that looks like. So these are some of the things that I'll kind of explain in that guide in more details. And then debts, I really just want you to list out the debts you want to get paid off. I don't want you to look to see like how much you owe on these debts. Not right now. We'll get into that. So that's the first part. So it's exciting. You know, it's like, where are you going? And then the next part is more of like the reality check. <laughs> and that's the inventory, I call it. So you want to look at how much is your income on a monthly basis? If you're like Laura or I, your income will vary on a month to month basis. So just take an average if you can and kind of work with that. Or if you want to play it safe, just take like a low month. You're like, you know, it's, this month wasn't that great. Work with that number because anything above that number, then you can put into your savings towards those goals that we just talked about and get there even faster. So a few different options there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at expenses. This is where it can get a little emotional, a little bit overwhelming. We try to avoid it. You're probably going to stop this video right now and be like, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm out of <laughs> I'll do this later. No, no, no. Let's do it now. <laughs> totally. Right? So when you're looking at your Grab expenses. Grab a tea or a coffee and come on back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> we'll get through it together. To <laughs> so we're going to look at expenses. So for expenses, I break this into two different categories. One is fixed expenses and one is variable expenses. So fixed expenses, they're nice and easy. They're the same every single month. This might be phone bill, a subscription that you might have. It might be um, your utilities if you're on like a schedule for your utilities. There's honestly in the guide, there's two pages of fixed expenses. There'll be, <laughs> there'll be a lot of options there for you. So it might be car payments. And in here too, any regular debt payments will go in those fixed expenses as well. So we are going to kind of work through the debts as we go as well. The next one is variable expenses. And kind of like as it suggests, they vary <laughs> on a month to month basis. So they're not always the same. This could be something like groceries, gas for your car, entertainment, eating out, those kinds of things that it's hard to necessarily budget for them because they're constantly changing. But again, we're going to look at averages. And then the last thing that we do is with these fixed and variable expenses is we want to look at which ones are needs and which ones are wants. <laughs> Sometimes our wants feel like needs, but bear with me. Let's be honest with ourselves and look at what's actually the needs. Do I need to go to Starbucks every day? Probably not. <laughs> I'm not saying that you want to cut joy out of your life, but I just want you to star or put a mark beside the ones that are the needs. And then the wants you can look at after like, you know what, it's in my budget. I can go to Starbucks every day. That's what brings me joy, <laughs> right? It's having that flexibility, but 
just being honest with yourself in this process, because so many times we find ourselves impulse buying. So actually thinking about this yesterday is that how many times are you just online and you see something come up and add advertising is remarkable these days. Listen, and it's like it's literally giving you exactly what you want all the time. <laughs> right. And it's like, I didn't even know that I needed this. Look, I can make salad so much faster. Getting it. Amazon next day delivery. <laughs> totally, 100%. So easy. Right. So these are like our impulse shopping, right? So we find that that might be a want. And this budget will allow you to see like where that's happening and really help you hone in on your habits. So we're going to do another episode and I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm doing like a no spending challenge where I'm trying not to buy anything that's unnecessary. And it's been so interesting because I'm getting to see my own habits and how I've been like, oh, I really want this. I'm like, Kristen, come on. <laughs> right, let's, let's get real. So these are the things you're looking for when you're doing the needs versus wants. Is something an impulse buy or something that you don't really need? Is it immediate gratification? And I was thinking a lot about how our lifestyle has changed compared to say our grandparents. So our grandparents were so good. Like they have, you know, a lot of money and it's not just because they've worked their whole lives. Yes, that's part of it. They had the discipline to save, but they also live within their means, right? If something was broken, they fixed it, right? You know, they didn't go out to restaurants every single day, right? They would cook their meals. Like, think about if you did that, how much money you would save on a yearly basis. Insane, yeah. right? Now, if something's broken, it's like, it's okay, I'll just buy a new one. Okay. Right? <laughs> huge, it's huge. So it's really interesting that way. So look at these needs versus wants in terms of what do I need to live my life? This is like shelter, food, um, you know, paying your utilities, different things like this. And then what are the wants? Like eating out. I love eating out. Like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> like, you know, what? If, but what are those wants? Those things that maybe aren't necessarily needs in your life. Does that all make sense? I hope everyone's yeah, following yeah. so and far. I just want to kind of share um, in one of the previous episodes, we talked about going back to our statements for your banking statements to actually yeah. see what's there. So unless you're paying with stuff with cash that you want to write down on this list that aren't wouldn't be on your other one, and you can just easily just um print out or transfer over. Your, your That's right, yeah. Bank Good call. Like a that way you're not guessing. Cause I know like sometimes I sit down for these things and it's like if I don't have something immediately there, I'll write down a few things, but I'm not actually being like fully intentional with it. Whereas when I have the list there in front of me, I can just be like, okay. Yeah, this is this is a fixed one. This is a variable one. Write them all down. Okay, this is clearly a need. This is a need. This is a need. This is a need. Okay, this is a want, 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 want. <laughs> and then also just bringing back around that even the ones that you write as wants, you can still choose to have them. Right? It doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of putting and separating what your needs are versus what you want your wants are, and then going based off of your values of where you want to spend your money. Because that's the whole thing with budgeting is that it's really just setting you up for success with where your values lie so I just yeah to absolutely and I love that and that's what I was gonna say but next was that those goals are you have to see if they're a priority for you because if you're like I want that Starbucks coffee more than I want to retire you're never gonna get to that place right so it's it's setting up like where you put your money shows you your priorities. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to think about. And so it's just shifting our thinking around that, which I know we're going to talk about in a later episode. So stay tuned for that. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like is like go through everything that you're spending. It's really good if you're using your debit um, or paying electronically because it's easy to go through those statements. Often when you're paying in cash, those things can kind of get lost. Um, however, I know paying in cash is, is a system that some people use, but you just have to be diligent with writing it down. Like I said, I do my budget every single day because it makes it so easy. Like I, I bought one thing yesterday, done, <laughs> like 30 seconds, here we go, right? So I think that's really Keep yeah, receipt. keep your receipts. Absolutely. Especially if you're a business owner, because so many things you can write off anyways. Mm -hmm. So 
So that's that's kind of what that looks like. And then what we're going to do is once we have the list, we know our fixed expenses, our variable expenses, which ones are needs, which ones are wants. We're going to do different categories in that. So you want to look to see what is your goal for each category? Like, say, for example, you're looking at groceries. How much do I want to be spending on groceries every single month? Right. And then write down kind of what your goal is. And then what you're going to do is that's where then you'll put your actual. What did I actually spend in all these different categories? And that will kind of see where the difference lies. I want you to put another column. If you're using the workbook, this is all in there. But I want you to have another column that shows the difference. OK, well, I wanted to spend, you know, $100 on eating out. Well, I spent $200 the difference is $100, right? Okay, what can I do to adjust this, right? And in every category, what does that look like? Because if we don't know the difference, then maybe our goals aren't realistic. Maybe we need to adjust our goals or maybe we need to adjust what we're actually spending, right? There's two different things, two variables there. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want you to do kind of once you get your inventory done. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the debt right? Debt is, again, can be very overwhelming, something we try to avoid. Like, I don't want to look at my credit or my credit card statements, right? But looking at it allows you to be able to create a plan to pay it off. And that's what budgeting is. It's just creating a plan, right? It doesn't have to feel restrictive. So in the, the debt, I want you to be able to write down all your debts, how much you owe on them, and what the payments are. And then you can kind of see where that money is going as well. Am I, should I be paying more towards my debt? I think we did a whole episode all about debt, right? So <laughs> if you need some help around debt, you, we got you. And so really you want to add up all of your expenses at the end and see, are, is your income more than your expenses or vice versa? Am I spending more than I make? And here you really have two options. One, you could reduce your expenses or you can increase your income. And today it cannot be easier to increase your income, right? Like there's so many online possibilities of increasing your income. Like that's one thing that we are so lucky to have technology to be able to help us make additional money, right? Or I don't know, you can, there's even like, Uber and like other things, if you're not like techie, like, or I'm mean, sure there's, there's, there's tons of people hired. <laughs> there's literally things where you can take pictures of your feet and people will pay you to see. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Danny about that. I'm like, sign me up, man, as well. <laughs> there, you know, there's options, right? <laughs> So I can't. So there's <laughs> options to increase your income, right? And that's one thing that that we help people with as well is like, how can you increase your income? Because sometimes you're like, Kristen, I'm not eating out. I'm not shopping on Amazon. I'm doing like every single thing I can. And I still can't figure it out. Right. But you need to figure out where's the gap. And maybe it's something that you hadn't even been tracking. So like on the list, I put um, alcohol and cigarettes, you know, things like that, because often that doesn't get put into the budget. We're looking at like groceries and eating out and whatever. But how much are you spending on those kinds of things? Or like lottery tickets and gambling, <laughs> right? Like those things maybe don't get accounted for. So I really want you to take a detailed inventory and see what you can do. And often you don't need to change your lifestyle to reduce your um, your expenses. It's often just looking in the right places. And that's one of the things I specialize is like, how can we help you save more money? Just rearranging things. Or maybe there's something that I know that you're like, I didn't even know I was paying for that. Like this week alone, I helped a client. Um, one client was paying $84 on a charge he didn't even know about. Uh, another client was spending $132 every single month. Like it's just knowing the right places to look. That's a big portion of it. So that's kind of like the guide in terms of the budget. Obviously, I go into a lot more details and things like that in the worksheet. And you can, like I said, pause this video as you go through because you're going to want to take some time with this. This isn't like, I'm going to do my budget. It's like, no, be really intentional with it. Set those goals, look at the inventory and really sit with it. How are you feeling around it as well? 
because if we just do it as an exercise, we're not going to stick with it. <laughs> and like, why, why do it if we're not even going to use it? <laughs> so food for thought. <laughs> So the last thing I just wanted to throw in here was just a few tips that I thought might be helpful for you. So one is if you do find that you're somebody who does impulse buying, I want you to just put it in your cart online. Say you're using Amazon, put it in your Amazon cart, leave it for at least two weeks and then come back to it. If you're still thinking about it, you're like, okay, well, I did really want that salad spinner, <laughs> right? Okay, well, then then maybe make that purchase. But if you're like, oh, I totally forgot that salad spinner was in my Amazon cart, then just delete it. I had a client that did this and deleted $10,000 of stuff in his Amazon cart in a year, Jesus, which is crazy, yeah. right? You can totally see it, yeah. And it's like, it's not that hard to spend 10 grand, like, You'd be surprised. It adds up really fast. Yeah. So again, another tip is to use your debit because then you can go online. You can see your expenses. It's a lot easier. I also have um, a spreadsheet that I use. So if that's something, feel free to book a call with me and I can walk you through that process as well. Um, another one we talked about before was cancel any subscriptions that you're not actually using. You could also negotiate your bills a lot of people don't know that they can do this, but say you've had your phone for a long time and you're like, hey, I've been here for 10 years. Is there anything you can do to reduce this? We actually reduced our bill by like $50, our phone bill. And even like with the internet, it like there's so many offers all the time. It's like, well, Rogers, Bell told me they would give me this plan. And they're like, okay, no problem. We'll give you that plan too. <laughs> right. Right. My phone bill, before I was paying over $100, now I'm paying $35 a month for 30 gigs of data. And then we just added Danny onto it for the exact same. And then my mom was uh, on like a Bell internet thing where she was on like a two year, it was a certain price. And then after that, it went up and they were going to yeah. increase. I think it was over $100 per month for wow. home internet. And so Virgin was like, oh, we can give you that for $30 a month. I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's, let's go over and sign it up. And I know that as soon as you go to cancel from one, then mm -hmm. you go to somewhere else and they'll immediately call you back. Oh, so yeah. I get you back. Like they're literally within a day. They're like, hey, stop. <laughs> you're like, hey, yeah. Hey. <laughs> But yeah, there's definitely like a lot of like wiggle room in that stuff. And that was something that I never, ever thought to do before. I was just like, oh, that's just the reality of it. You know, like I have to pay mm -hmm. this amount for my phone bill, but it's totally not. Yeah. So I love that you have that in there. Yeah. Can I ask who's your phone with the $30 uh, a month? Virgin. That's incredible. Okay. There yeah, you go. So yeah. go check them out. That's amazing. Yeah. Right. I always it's like good deals. they were going to give me. Yeah. Like, and I know it's like they, you know, we were saying about like the credit cards, they slowly increase things. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yes, yeah. Yes. But the, um, that, what, yesterday they were like, um, well, for one more dollar, you get unlimited data. I ended up saying no to it just because I'm like, I don't need unlimited data. So even like 30 gigs is a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, unless like I plan on going traveling or something within Canada, then that data would be great because I work online, but I can always yeah. at the time. I'm sure they'll probably yeah. deal at that point. But sure. yeah, they've always kind of got cool stuff going on and they're very- Hey, okay. there you go. Tip of the day. I love that. <laughs> few more that I have for you. One is just price matching. If you don't price match, I am like, anything I can do to save money on groceries, I'm like, I don't want to spend money on groceries. And I'm sure you don't either. Flip yeah, is a really good app. Yeah, so there's an app called Flip um, and it shows you all the flyers. You have to make sure that your the store you go to will price match. We go to No Frills, they price match. And so you just show them like Metro has the you know avocados on for three dollars. They're like, okay, we won't put it in for three dollars. We save so much money, like normally about 10% yeah. by just we were doing just that every about that, We all just go to the same grocery store and Danny asked me, he's like, we went to a different grocery store and he's like, Oh, is this one more expensive? And I'm like, I have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of like it's food. I know that I need to buy it. And yeah. I just do it. But I'm like, if there's an app that I can easily just be like, okay, like this is the best place for me to be getting most of the stuff. And yeah. Know, yeah. Or if you have a favorite store that price matches, like just have the app and then they'll price match everything that you want. Oh, amazing. Yeah. 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 yeah for sure. It's so price matching is really good. 
I also try to like the one grocery store near our house. I know on Tuesday they reduce a bunch of their stuff. So I like to buy the reduced stuff and then I just freeze what I need to. Um, and then I have it. So we also, <laughs> this is total side note, but one other thing that we do is like, we try a, for like a week, a month to just eat out of our pantry and what we have in the house. And I find that's really helpful too, because it helps us circulate things as well. Mm -hmm. So, and then the next one is just being mindful of your spending. Kind of like what you said is knowing, you know, how much do avocados cost, right? You want to know those things so you can be mindful of your spending and just being mindful of your impulse buying, right? Is catch yourself. Do I really need this? I have one client. She's like, I spend $500 a month at the dollar store. Like, I don't think anyone needs $500 a month with <laughs> at the dollar store, right? But it's it's those impulse buying and it's it's just being really mindful. Once you can start to get in the habit of asking yourself the question of if you need something when you're buying things, that's going to make a huge difference for you as well. And once you start doing your budget and your goals become your priority, you're not even going to think about those dollar store items, for example, because you're like, I just want to retire as soon as possible, or I'm saving for a vacation. Like you could save for something fun, right? Like it's it's immediate gratification versus like a vacation. I'm going to choose like a vacation every time, right? So you have those options. And it's so funny. So <laughs> I use Groupon. Are you familiar with Groupon? No. Okay. So check out Groupon. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you can get a lot of different things in your area, like services and different products and stuff at a discount. So my, my birthday is, is in February and I was looking at uh, getting a manicure done. And I'm like, okay, let's see if I can find somewhere that has a deal. And a friend of mine is like, you're always with the Groupons. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? It's because my goals are a higher priority to me than spending money on say going to a spa that's like full out big thing I'm like no I just I just want a manicure done like <laughs> kind of idea and so it's just knowing that you can save money on different things and just finding those are like coupons or whatever your thing is but there's always options to enjoy the things that you like without spending a ton of money mm -hmm. so I hope that's helpful. Is there any questions that you have around budgeting, Laura? I don't think so. I just want to kind of reiterate what you just said about making your goal yeah. a priority. Like, yeah. I think that's just so key because when you do and you have that mindfulness around your spending around, is this a priority for me? And does it align with my goals that I currently have? Like, you will probably notice that sometimes you're just compulsively buying things that necessarily don't align with actually what you want because- and then when we're shifting our values, shifting our beliefs, there's a bit of a lag point before it clicks in and it's just like an automatic program, right? So it's like, there's that kind of in-between phase where it's like, you need to be conscious about it or else you're going to continue falling back into these old habits. So I just wanted to yeah. kind of bring that back to the forefront of like making your goals, your main priority. And when that happens, that's when things are really going to shift. Yeah, absolutely. And that actually brings us into the homework or actionable items for, for this week is one, downloading the guide and then set out what your savings and your debt goals are, because that's going to help keep you motivated towards keeping those habits and then take an inventory. Just just follow the guides. Like if you download the guide, then you're going to be able to just do all the homework really easily, right? Do the inventory, see where your needs and your wants are. And then I would love if everyone can comment below, letting us know what some are some of their adjustments that they made to be able to make sure that their expenses fit into their income, right? Because that's really what it is with budgeting is like, how can I make sure I'm making more money than I'm spending at the end of the day? For sure, yeah. Yeah, no, that's huge. I just want to say thank you for putting together that guide because I know that it took you um, a good amount of time to be able to put that together for all of us. So thank you so much for just taking your time to put that together. And um, yeah, um, curious as well from everybody who's listening, if you have any other kind of tips, strategies that you use yeah. and stuff like that, go ahead and throw them in the comments below because there's so much out there now and there's so much that continue to come to the forefront when it comes to these little apps that you can use for saving on groceries or this or that. So feel mm -hmm. free to whatever's working for you feel free to share those in the comments. Um, yeah. Let us know. That would be amazing. It'd be really great to see the resources and just, um, you know, build the community more because 
it's there there are there's so many different apps that you can't know about everything so yeah, yeah that's fantastic yeah and that um, this budgeting worksheet is really going to lead us into that next and into the next episode that we have coming up for you which mm. is taxes which if you're somebody like me <laughs> <laughs> definitely avoid doing your taxes sometimes because of the budgeting piece because it's like oh now I need to gather all of my stuff in order to then have it done so it's something that I've been working on and I'm excited to continue honing my skills on of getting all of this stuff all organized and ready to go so that it's not a big deal come tax season where it's already there already organized already ready and then yeah. it's just one of those things you do every single year that we do yeah Exactly. And if you get the spreadsheet, if we meet and we'll do the, I can help with the spreadsheet that I mentioned. That's like, that's what I use for my taxes. Cause like everything is already laid out. It literally says like, this is how much you spent in this category. And I'm like, when it comes taxes, I'm just like, here you go, count it. <laughs> it doesn't take very long, which means you also spend less money on your taxes because they don't need to take a lot of time to do it. Very right. True. Yeah. So, and speaking of taxes, uh, your RSP contribution deadline is coming up on the 29th of February. So you have a few more days if you do want to make a contribution to your RSP, which will help you basically get a better uh, return. If, if you're an employee, if you're self-employed, it helps reduce the amount of taxes that you're going to be paying. But just so you know, RSP deadline is coming up. So if you want to take advantage of it, don't don't wait. <laughs> Just do it today because you don't have very much time. Mm -hmm. So we do a full episode on RSP. So if you're unsure what that means, yeah, we'll watch that episode. And when in doubt, reach out to Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. You're like, what the heck? Is, what does that even mean? <laughs> Get to Kristen, ask the question. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Any, any questions that you have, I'm more than happy to help out. Um, or even if you just want some like customized budgeting, cause I know it can be a lot, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to do that. And I just want to take some time to thank everyone for joining us on these episodes. It really means a lot to Laura and I, and if you can subscribe and follow for more, because the more people that we can help, the more, the more people that we can help, the bigger change that we can make. And that's really why we're here doing this is because we really want to make an impact. So thank you again for just taking the time to watch this episode, learning a little bit about budgeting, and just enjoy feeling into your heart around your finances.